Hey everyone, it's Jenna, and in this video, I wanted to talk about what it's been like my first year and a half as an HTML email developer. So it's been a ridiculously long time since I put out a video. It's been a lot going on in my life, and I'm not about that web developer life anymore. Um, when I first started this channel, I talked about a lot of web development topics and I was aspiring to be a web developer and I am not anymore. Um, so I haven't been putting out content for this channel and um, this is actually going to be the last video for this channel. And I just wanted to make one last video just talking about what it's been like over the past year and a half I've been working as an HTML email developer. Um, I've been getting a lot of comments and I've been trying to still respond to most of them. Some of them I might have skipped. Um, I hope that I can answer a lot of the questions I've been getting in the comments in this video. Um, but yeah, this is going to be the last video. I just wanted to do one more video just to help people out, let them know what to expect if you're going to work as an email developer um, for the long haul. And yeah. Um, so I've been at the same company now doing email development for a year and a half now and it's been going good. A lot has changed, um, learned a lot and um, you know the job description has changed a lot. Uh, so let's talk about what has changed. Um, to answer some of the questions, I don't use frameworks. Um, I don't use any um, I don't really use any special languages uh, besides HTML, CSS, and I now use a language called RPL, which is um, specific, it stands for Responses Programming Language, and it's not really an important language to know because it only works with one ESP, one email service provider, and that happens to be Responses, which is the one we use at work, so I had to learn that programming language. And um, it wasn't too difficult to learn besides, um, well, actually it kind of was a little difficult to learn. It was difficult to learn because I learned best watching courses and I learned best from watching and doing. And basically the only way to learn RPL is by reading the documentation. And the documentation that is uh, given by responses is actually pretty terrible. So I, um, found out that there's a similar programming language called Apache FreeMarker and I went and I learned that programming language and I'm able to do things like dynamically bring in prices from the website. Um, what else have I done? I'm able to like convert currencies into different country currencies um, because we've actually started to um, roll out emails for different countries now. Uh, the company that I work for is an e-commerce beauty brand and um, we've gone international so I've had to um, learn how to do some things like you know convert the U.S. prices into European prices stuff like that. Um, so that was pretty interesting pretty difficult to do. Um, what else have I done? Um, I experimented a bit with making responsive templates. We actually did an A-B test on a responsive template versus a non-responsive template. We actually found that the responsive template did not do as well in the A-B test. So we haven't really gone back to it. Um, hopefully that's something we can implement in the future because I'm kind of surprised. I kind of thought that the uh, responsive template would have done better in the A-B test, um, but that's something that I've done. Um, I've done emails, international emails. I had to set up um, abandoned cart emails and um, welcome series emails for uh, for some European countries that we've been expanding into. Um, so that was pretty interesting and pretty fun. Um, right now, I'm in my second busy season so far and we're pumping out like three promo emails a day. Um, so doing a lot of work for the holiday season, a lot of people ordering things for Christmas, getting kind of busy. Um, so definitely expect the workload to be a lot if you're going to get a job as an HTML email developer. Um, definitely expect to have to learn different languages. There, like I said, I had to learn RPL, but I'm sure there's probably some other language that go with other ESPs 
that you might have to learn, like you might have to learn a templating language. Um, so be sure to keep that in mind. Be sure that every skill you learn, everything new that goes into your head, try to use it as an, um, as a way to ask for more money. I actually negotiated a raise at my job and I got it. So that's exciting. Um, that's definitely a good thing that happened. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think what else people ask a lot of questions about. I kind of wish I could have done this video live, but YouTube uh, changed their live threshold and doesn't let me do live videos anymore because I don't have a thousand subscribers. Um, so I'm trying to think what else is uh, new at my job. Um, so every company varies as far as if you have to know Photoshop, do you have to know this? It really depends. There are a lot of roles that are going to want you to know Photoshop and are going to want you to design. And there's going to be a lot of roles that don't care. Um, I think it helps. I mean, but it's not necessary. I mean, the company that I'm working for does like the fact that I know Photoshop because I'm able to work easier with the design team. I understand things when the design team is out, which they were all on vacation for like a week because one of the other girls, one of the other designers quit. I was able to step in and fix some images that needed to be fixed. Um, but design, Photoshop, it varies. Like if, if you're applying to a lot of, I would say if you're applying to a lot of email developer jobs and getting turned down because you don't know Photoshop, then maybe it would probably be good to learn, but I don't know. It's really a hard question to answer. And um, personally, I don't think you should learn Photoshop unless you want to, um, but that just varies company to company. Some companies you will only be responsible for coding emails. And then some companies like mine, you'll be responsible for coding them and deploying them. Meaning you're going to be going into the ESP, you're going to be scheduling them, you're going to be creating programs, you're going to be, um, you know, learning different things like that. Like I had to learn how to do a B test in, e in, in the ESP. I had to learn how to do multivariate testing, which is basically when you test, uh, like we, we test like multiple subject lines at a time because we like to see which subject lines perform the best with our audience. Um, things like that. Do you need to know an ESP before applying to the job? Probably not because every company uses a different ESP. If you really feel like it will help you, maybe it wouldn't hurt to sign up for MailChimp. I think it's free and just play around in there just so you could say you have some familiar, familiar, uh, familiar ality. Is that a word? with an ESP um, and you know what you're doing. Um, but yeah, like I've never used responses before the job I'm working at now, but I have used MailChimp and I have used Salesforce. So learning the ESP is really just something they're gonna train you on the job. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I'm trying to think what else people ask me in the comments and really a lot of it, um, I can't remember off the top of my head. But I feel like a lot of the comments and the questions that I'm asked, I think a lot of people are overthinking it. It really is a simple job. If you want to get your foot in the door and you want to learn how to code emails, just learn HTML, learn CSS, learn how to do tables, um, maybe read through some of the Limits blog articles, read through some of the email and asset blog articles, learn about what bugs happen, you know, learn about how to code for Outlook, how to code for the different email clients like Gmail, Outlook, you know, it's really not that difficult. Don't like, there's really not, uh, in my opinion, there's not a big need to overthink it and learn like a million frameworks and learn a million things. It's really just HTML, CSS, tables, just learn it. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say, but yeah, it's been a pretty good year and a half so far at the job I'm at. I like it. I like my boss, I like the coworkers, everything's going good. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So really appreciate everyone who's shown me love on this channel. I really do. Um, it's been going through a lot. I've still been working on my clothing brand, trying to build that up. It's not easy at all uh, building a business, but still going at it. Right now I'm trying out different things to see what my favorite things are, you know, trying out different artistic things to see like, where's my, where's my niche? I'm not a hundred percent sure if the clothing brand is for me, 
yet or not, but I'm still going at it, running under paid clothing. Um, I moved recently. I moved last October. So that was um, exciting slash a very, very difficult time in my life. Um, still dealing with, you know, a lot of issues like anxiety, depression, uh, perfectionism, which is going to be a lot of the topics that I'm going to be talking about on my new channel. Uh, I'm going to leave a link down in the new, in the, <laughs> in the, in the description if you're interested in following me on my journey with the new channel. I'm, I'll leave that down below, but this is going to be the last, uh, web development, email development topic video. Um, if you have any comments, leave them below. I'll be answering comments for probably like the next couple of weeks to a month. Um, but after a month, I'm not, I'm just, this account's going to be dead. I mean, I'm still leaving the videos up, but in like another month or so, I'm not going to be responding to comments anymore on this channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will, uh, talk to you later.